Hey, everyone. Your designers are here. I'm Anita at Cedar Hill Farmhouse. And I'm Yvonne at Stone Gable. And I'm Kelly at My Soulful Home. We've got tips and tricks and decorating advice for you today. So let's get started. Today, we're going to talk about a holiday entertaining guide. We've got some fantastic ideas for having get-togethers big or small. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because everybody's so excited for the holidays. And here's the thing. If you don't plan, you don't do. Yvonne has another saying. If you fail to plan, you plan plan to to fail. fail. I mean, write these down. These are words of wisdom. Uh, The first one is from my mom. The second one from Yvonne. (laughs) Words to live by. So Mm -hmm. make your list, make your plans, uh, get your holiday ideas going. I can't tell you how many years have gone by where in September, I'm like, I'm going to have this fun party and my my friends over. And all of a sudden, the days and the weeks are going by and life just gets in the way and you don't do it. So if you're listening today and you get sparked up about having a holiday party, then pick a date and decide whether you're going to make an invitation or you're going to send an evite or whatever you're going to do and get Mm -hmm. started because this is a busy time of year. And, you know, I'm sure all your friends are wildly popular too. So they're (laughs) going to have places to go. I mm-hmm. think you have an excellent point. And mm-hmm. I think also what Yvonne is saying, I mean, that's certainly a tip that that I've used for years, and that is to plan it all out. I mean, know what you're going to make. And then I always try to make sure I'm making things, a lot of things that can be made ahead so that I'm mm-hmm. not in the kitchen when guests are there. And girls, I mean, me my, just- my goal is everything's done. When people show up. Oh, I'm, I don't want to be cooking in the kitchen or doing anything. Mm-hmm. And usually I have, I hire somebody to help me. I have a friend that um, does some things for me. And also, like I've said before, high school girls are wonderful at this because they really want to learn. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. I did not breed that type of high school girl. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we don't have somebody anyone else. I no, don't know. there's nobody in this house like that either. But oh, I'm have, sure they exist maybe somewhere. Maybe you Mm-hmm. In theory, them. other people's high school girls might be eager, but, um, but Hey, you know, let, let's start, let's take a step back. You decide you're going to have a party mm-hmm. or a get together party might be scares people because it seems too, too big. So just a little get together, a few friends over something like that. But how do you feel about the electronic invitation? Do you do those evites, those little post things? That, I think I they're adorable and they can, mm-hmm. you, they keep track of who's coming and you can leave comments on them. I wouldn't right. do it for a wedding, but Hey, we've had it. We've been invited to a wedding through those. Well, really? so, right. You know, I, I mean, wouldn't, I, but Hey, that's fine with me. I don't, I don't turn my nose up at those at all. I agree with Yvonne. I mean, in this day and age, it's just so much easier and so much less expensive. I mean, why not use the technology? Yeah, and, and they're you so can create cute. a beautiful online card. Uh, and if someone wants to print mm-hmm. it out, they probably can. But, you know, you just end up throwing those away anyway. Yeah. And then you do. You, but you feel bad because it's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. No, I cut it up and make a gift tag out of it. Come on. Oh, well, <laughs> I do. I saw the cutest idea for doing that with a card. Mm-hmm. Oh, you didn't like that when I brought that idea? Well, well I agree with you. But it's made you. into Evite's- Christmas trees and, and oh, strung together. Cute, cute, cute. Evite is really great. And mm-hmm. I think what the other one is called. It's a little bit more complicated. Like the envelope opens and they're super cute. I think that's absolutely fine, too. And, you know, when you then when you have the idea, you can get going and, and bam, you don't have to take and the time to fill them out and mail them and all that. Yeah. But when you get something that's an actual card, especially now, it's kind of special. Oh, you know? and so I, that, I am not taking away from that. I love to oh, get an invite I think in it the is. mailbox. No, I do, too. Mm-hmm, but I'm just mm-hmm. saying if it's me, I'm probably going to do the electronic. And, and I would I, be happy. And, here's and I'm happy advantage. getting the electronic. Yeah. Right, and here's right. another advantage of it. You can put it right. If you have Outlook or something that it can automatically go into that. If you're the hostess and nobody's and somebody's not answering, you can send them another one. You know, they keep yeah. track of that. And you can see who's coming. I mm-hmm. mean, which is nice. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of advantages and right. why not make use of that technology? Mm-hmm. It's available. Okay. Want to talk, want to talk what kind of parties? I've got like a arm's length of list of parties. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I do. I have some mm-hmm. ideas of, for parties that are pretty simple. So I don't know how complicated we might be getting, but I'm I'm game to listen to them all and get some. Yeah, let's hear inspiration. them. Go ahead, Yvonne. Well, start let's with start out with a traditional cocktail party. Mm-hmm. And you can go two ways, which I think is so much fun. I think you get really dressed up. 
you know, as we're coming into maybe New Year's or whatever. Um, and you can also do a pretty dressed down one as well. So it can be as fancy as, you know, you can imagine that they would be or as, you know, laid back. You can have a theme like, um, oh, you know, we we have a lot of hard cider, uh, small batches, small breweries around here. It could be something as cute as that. It could be an eggnog party. And you could ask everyone to bring either an hors d'oeuvre or a dessert. And I don't think anymore that that's tacky, you know, um, because you're having, it's, it's a lot of people don't even want to host anymore because our lives are so busy. I so agree with you. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think there's anything tacky about that at all and sort of Mm -hmm. building your party that way. But I'm going to be completely honest as I can be with you guys and our listeners. Mm -hmm. I hate having to bring something to someone else's house. (laughs) Oh, okay. Okay. Especially when I go to a party and uh, especially if it's a cocktail party and everybody's having their glass of wine and you're talking to someone and, you know, you don't want to be talking to somebody when there's food hanging out of their mouths anyway. I usually don't eat anyway. You know, maybe some people Mm -hmm. are going there and they're going to chow down. But I think sometimes people don't even eat all the stuff that's brought. People feel like Mm -hmm. they have to have such an abundance. And, you know, you got to get the platter. And I did do this smart thing a few years ago. I just bought a bunch of plates from like a Goodwill and I just use those and I say, please don't even give it back to me. Just don't worry about Smart washing idea. it or you do it on nice mm-hmm. plastic nice. or something Aren't like that. Nice. And there you go. But you know, there's the, there. Okay. I mean, I yeah, think it's a pretty you're good Yeah, but if you have a holiday cocktail party, you need to serve some food. No, and you need I have to serve no some food. problem with, with, or, or just wait. And people may say, I never get invited to something that I don't say, what can I bring? I always say, what can I bring? And I'm always yeah. glad when the person's like, bring wine, you know, but this, uh, <laughs> yeah, but I, I think it's just like, but I think you got to right, take Kelly. it in the car and you got to schlep it over. And then you're worried. Then you have like hors d'oeuvre stress. Are they going to like it? Oh, you know, uh, is it gonna oh be you're, you're making too much out of this. Here's my okay. thing. If I'm going to supply the whole bar. Right. It's okay if somebody brings something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, but I, honestly, I agree I with what you said. You, do. you, you yeah. don't need a thousand hors d'oeuvres. No, no. I mean, you, don't. you probably need a lot less than you think you do. I mean, right. just make sure there's right. enough volume. Right. To Although cover all the you guests. probably need, what is it, six to eight hors d'oeuvres per person. Yeah, but you don't, I mean, but the thing is, you don't need to have a ton of different dessert, uh, different mm-hmm. hors d'oeuvres. Is what I'm saying. Or maybe. even at if a, you're doing it all, then maybe just do a few different. Oh, things. oh, yeah. honey, I would rather serve Thanksgiving dinner than do our d'oeuvres. Yeah, well, I hard. know, I know what it's you're hard. saying. It's so, so much more work, in, so work intensive. But a cocktail party is really fun. Or do a dessert cocktail party. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing too that I uh, used to do all the time is dessert parties. That was my mm-hmm. favorite because it's so much easier just doing dessert, and I love making desserts. And I'm telling you, if it takes a rolling pin to make it, I'm there. I don't even like oh eating my. pies, but wow. I love to make them. Wow. I love mm. the rolling pin. I don't know why. I just do. Okay. Well, then you would love this party that I've been invited to here in my area. It's just called The Cookie Party. And it's oh. really a cookie competition party. Really? Tell us more. Yeah. I want to know what that's all about. Yeah. Okay, no, so she's that- already packing her bag. She's going to show you up. <laughs> she's well, it out there. I'm going to make... I'm going to make... 24 karat gold gilded gingerbread oh. men. G- gingerbread men with elegance. I yes. love it. <laughs> gilded gingerbread men. Uh huh. So, okay. So, uh, I'll have to sign you up. You know, it's not easy to get an invitation to this party, but I'll see you. Uh oh. <laughs> so, you may not get okay. one, Yvonne. So, the cookie. So, it's, it is a competition. It's friendly slash maybe not friendly. Cutthroat. Um, oh, really? Little cutthroat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cut the cookie throat. Um, so, your cookies and. An unwrapped toy for tot is your oh, entry that's fee. so nice. Okay, and so then you need to come with your cookies, and then you need to come with, you know, it's recommended like twenty little index cards with your recipe. And so, so you're, are, be- you're talking about cocktail party stress. I would be. I'd have to like start oh, planning no. in August so for this. <laughs> this is so stressful. Yes, it's stressful. So but- is this? So when I go my, I go to a cookie exchange. It's not a competition, and I bring something that's well. Actually, I bring fudge every year. That's my mm. signature uh, thing that I bring to this uh, event all the time. But I, to be honest with fudge you, fudge mails well. I've heard. And so do you have Yvonne a recipe for that on the blog? 
Oh, that's you know. I'm trying to look. At, I'll have to look and see. If I've not, do it so we can. No, post you're it. right. Mm-hmm. I do need to do it because it's a recipe. I do it every mm-hmm. year. But you know, I wouldn't hold up. And then you know, I was in a competition one time with these homemade cinnamon rolls that I make that are just amazing. But you know, they're not wow. fancy looking like the cookie, the sugar cookies that are cut out in the snowflakes with the blue paint. You know, the blue yeah. uh, royal okay. icing and the the yeah. was it dra- dragettes the g- silver. Oh, yeah. Druggy. Yeah. On there. Um, I mean, is that what you're making? That sort of thing? No, no. Everybody can do. You know, you can is it have to be like a really fancy thing? Is it by thing? taste or no, is no, it by it does, looks and taste? Or Well, I, I if I can get a word in it. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So the cookie competition, you come with your cookies, you know, probably two dozen or something like that. And then your your unwrapped toy for tots. So there's a box. You put them your toy in there. You lay your cookies out. Your cookie gets a number. Oh. Like one, two, however many. Mm-hmm. All right. And so that goes with your cookies. And then you put your little recipe cards. Some people laminate. Some people don't. That's okay. And oh then my. everybody goes around. You get some wine or whatever you'd like to drink. And everybody goes around and they taste the cookies. And then the cookies get the numbers get voted on. But is it cookies. taste or appearance and Well, taste? it's really up to everyone at oh. the party. You know, you, so you say, don't know oh, who brought what? Is it really secret who brought what? Yeah, you don't know unless you walked in with the person you saw that you I spied their cookie, their gilded gingerbread <laughs> man or something. <laughs> well, we know sparkling. who that's going to be. Oh, my. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that so then at the end of the night, there's a little box and then, you know, tally up who won. And then the you know, then it's just you get Do you get a trophy. Say no, there's no trophy. It's just like bragging you know, rights hat on the back, a crown rights, and then everybody <laughs> goes around. Then whoever's hosting has you know pa- some nice paper plates or whatever those heavy china. Wait a ones. minute, is this like can- the uh, Mardi Gras where if you get the baby, you have to host it the next year? Oh, I don't know. No, no, oh, I don't think so. Uh-uh. See, maybe if you win, then congratulations, you're hosting next <laughs> you're year. You're hosting next year. That <laughs> should actually do it that way. And then you can go around when the competition is over, and then you can go around and everybody can take a little bit of each other's cookies, and you take the recipes you want, and everybody had a great time. So mm. that's a possibility. But, you know, that's a lot of organization, mm-hmm. and obviously people would be bringing things um, because that's what it's all mm-hmm. about. I've been to cookie exchanges, and I've had them. And I yeah. love doing that, first of all, because it's just fun. But here yeah. is, and, and I do bring gingerbread men because I have the best recipe. It's Martha Stewart's for gingerbread okay. men. And the secret is pepper. Really? Ooh, they're very spicy. They're secret so delicious. Out. Sorry, Martha. <laughs> I'll, put, I'll put that out on my, um, but I, I mean, I changed it a little bit. So I'll put that on, I'll put that on the show notes, but it's, but my pet peeve and maybe somebody who does this, one of our listeners we i've i've had it before where i've put it, things in like big takeout containers and then i got uh-huh. these boxes that with the clear lids that you put a cake in but by the time a couple days rolls around they start getting soggy and they all sort of taste the same and they get crumbly oh. i want them to stay pristine and how do you do that like cookie keep tins? Your gingerbread men pristine yeah well you keep the 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 soft cookies separate from the crunchy cookies because I go to this uh, cookie exchange every year. So one of the tricks is you bring your cookies on a beautiful platter. I do my fudge on a huge, beautiful platter. And then I bring a cake cover, mm-hmm. but I actually put it upside down to put my cookies in. But mm. then as soon as I get home, I separate the soft cookies from the hard ones. Because otherwise, it's just what you said. Everything starts tasting the same. And, and the crunchy ones yeah. get all mushy. And they, they get have like to be separated. crumbs of other cookies on them. That- oh, I see. I see mm-hmm. what you're saying. Your gingerbread men are not. D- no, they're hard and crunchy. Like they're like a okay, yeah, you've got to pull those the out. Cookies. And then, oh, yeah. well, mm-hmm. and then a lot of them I actually put in the freezer and then just pull them out a little bit. You know what? Week. I think that ding, ding, ding. There you go. Well, you've been on a roll lately. That's a great idea. What can I say? Okay, now we're, we should get on to something. Excuse me, other I than- got the la- I got tip of the day. The last <laughs> <time>. <laughs> okay. Hey, I'm falling behind. I'm falling behind our- again. Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today. And let them know your friends at DTT sent you. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. 
Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free... That's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add DOS to your wellness regime. DOS is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. Are progressive dinners out of vogue? Oh, we used to do those in our neighborhood. I and went they to were one in my so neighborhood. Fun. We used to do it every year and I loved those. I did too. And I haven't been to one for years, but I think I, my daughter and her friends, she has the coolest friends. They do that on Capitol Hill, but I think, I think everybody should have a research. Okay, Yvonne, first of all, you have the coolest friends. Okay, Jackie, uh, I, have I do, friends, I do I have the coolest friends. Wow, Anita, that that is Anita, would you agree? You uh, and I must tell you, they are such wonderful friends. You have no idea what great <laughs> friends we are and how much we love oh, each stop. other and, and, mm-hmm. Are there for each other. So first of all, that's very true. But well, let's explain. A progressive dinner party is actually a party that occurs over several houses. Mm-hmm. So the appetizers will be at one house, maybe the drinks first. I don't know. Usually we had three houses. I mean, did you have more than that? Um, no. No, three. usually beginning entree mm-hmm. and then dessert. dessert. Mm-hmm. Okay, right. So you just go from one house to the next to the and next. And usually two people maybe host at one house. So if your house isn't chosen to, but you're going to pair up with somebody who's like maybe doing drinks and hors d'oeuvres or your house isn't chosen and you're going to pair up with somebody to do the main course. Yeah. I remember mm-hmm. the last one we did was so fun and the guys ended up on the back porch, uh, smoking cigars <laughs> and, uh, the women were inside, uh, having a good time. Sounds like my wine, parties. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It mm-hmm. was fun. It was fun. I was yeah, dessert. Fun. So. But you know what I think about? I mean, may, hopefully Jackie, and I'm sure her friends are doing it in a more casual way. The ones that I've been to, it was such, so much or, organization and orchestration goes into that sort of thing. So maybe that's why we don't. Do you know, about Jackie that so and her anymore. friends, first of all, they all love to cook. They're all these like semi gourmet cooks and they, it's like no big deal for them. They right. make everything look effortless. Well, I think I, I think I know where she gets that from. Really. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Here's a pretty effortless one for you. How about if you've got 
kids or kids in your neighborhood or grandkids or maybe just older people who like to act like kids sometimes. A hot chocolate party and you're watching Charlie Brown's Christmas. That is so because, cute. Oh, that's You know what I love fun. about that? Yeah, it's easy. You could do you do like a, a little hot chocolate bar with whatever things you can think of and maybe throw some candy canes in there and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And Charlie Brown's it's not very long and it's so fun, especially it is. for the parents or adults, because it's so nostalgic for us. You know, mm-hmm. we had to wait until that special Thursday night at 730 and be right in front of the TV or you missed it. That for is a year. or the Grinch that you know, stole now our Christmas. Kids can watch it yeah. whenever. Yeah. Right. And if you can, because it's a hot chocolate bar and it's little kids, you can little set them, let them sit on the ground and do it outside. We did a home even movie, better yet. Um, for, yeah, for Laura's birthday party and her birthday's in January, so you know we can do that here in California. But it was chilly, but we just projected it on our garage. And if you're doing hot, what chocolate are we doing for our warm stuff? What are we doing for our birthday party, Kelly? What are we going to do for our birthday? We're going to have to think of something good. I don't know. Because, you know, we have the yes. same birthday. Mm-hmm. You do. We do. So we'll In have January. to think about it. Okay, that. here I've got another Maybe one. And party. I've only done that. I've done this twice. But that twice was enough. But I think that everybody should oh, do it uh-oh. once. A gingerbread house party. Make a gingerbread house. Wow. With kitties. Oh, I mean... They get well. I've done that just with my kids, oh, but not as a party. Oh, oh. We, I've even done it with brownies. But I mean, I've had it at my house a couple times. And you use um, uh, um, graham crackers to make the gingerbread house, oh, and then you right. let it harden, oh, well, there you and then go. you let them decorate it. Did you use? Did you make that special icing? Royal icing. I forget what it's called? Royal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Royal icing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. That stuff, honestly, like. It's yeah, like they glue. Can use that instead of plaster. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you could, you're amazing. actually you could paste your the I joints of your house, in my house with it. With yes, that. and it would you, they'd yeah. stand up. Yeah, mm-hmm. you wonder what that does to your stomach. But hey, hey, it's, it's sugar. Holidays. Yeah, it's all fine. Hey, I have um, one of my favorite things to put out when I'm entertaining, and when I don't ask anybody to bring anything because my two least favorite words together are potluck. So, oh, I love I, potluck. Just, I'm just mentioning that again in case you So in other words, she's saying if we ever invite her to something, don't let her bring anything but wine. No, I no, you know, no. I'm a, I honestly, you know, I'm not patting myself, but I am a good cook and I and I like to cook. <laughs> but you're not bringing like it to that. our house is what no, you're but saying. Here's the thing. I think when I get invited out, I like just to get dressed and go and have a good time. And, and I think when people come to my house, like it's a treat. You're coming to my house. I don't want you to worry about bringing something, you know, bring me a bottle of wine, bring me some flowers. If you feel like oh. you to bring, bring me a nice candle, just come. And then it's really, it's, it's a night off for you too, where you're just going to enjoy yourself. But that's just me personally. I know that most of the world does not agree with me and they love. A well, good I party, have so many anyway. events at my house. I, I yeah. would, I would be off. I'd be yes, horrible. You clearly mm-hmm, entertain mm-hmm. more than I do. But so my favorite thing is to do this, uh, just a cheese platter. <gasps> but too. here's the thing. If you know how to make a good cheese platter, you get that cheese platter science down and it's mm-hmm. a balanced, interesting cheese platter. You could put that together literally, you know, one trip to one store and you can yep. put the whole thing together. That's in true. Like six but here's minutes. the, uh, or well, a charcuterie, or brie and fruit, charcuterie I mean, boards, which is the, yeah. Which is the new way to say a cheese mm-hmm. board with a couple pieces of fruit and some meat. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, yeah. And yeah. I've no, always okay. done the, the brie with the fruit and then maybe some uh, honey on mm-hmm. top with some nuts. Or brie and like fruit that. is always oh, so good. It. Which reminds me, I've got to get you all hooked up with my source in North Carolina. The guy has honey and they the bees go to the blueberry bushes. Oh. No, or blackberries. Oh. I'm trying to remember. The honey... I think it's blackberries. The honey tastes like blackberries. Uh, yeah, definitely. I, I would not love that. even We're kidding. Big honey eaters. Oh, I it, love that. It's not. It doesn't yeah. taste like mm-hmm. clover honey at all. It's amazing. Here, I want to. So. I want to add. I have a um, a a post called "Oh Christmas Tree Cheese Board," and it looks like a Christmas tree, <laughs> and it's one of my highest <laughs> pi- um, pinned. Uh, pictures on. Pinterest. I think I saw that on Pinterest today. Oh, did you? I was pinning on ideas. Yeah. Well, I saw ah. somebody's, but it was might have been a copy of yours. Oh. oh, a knockoff. Let me get back to my cheese idea because I have an idea and I want to see if you guys think it's a good idea because it could be a, 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 a wah, 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 yeah. pretty bond. So I don't know. I have to see. Okay. Well, I just thought of mm-hmm. this today. Um, okay. You know how I like to repurpose things from home yes, to home and Yes, we do. So, 
Okay. So oh, queen of the scrubby. I, <laughs> exactly. And I do like to, I love a cheese platter. And like you're, uh, like you're saying, with meat and maybe with some interesting honey or a mm, big spread, something lovely. that people are not going to mm-hmm. run into every day, right? And mm-hmm. make it beautiful. And it's like, it's like you're creating this beautiful work of art and then, you know, and you put some crackers out or some breads or something. I think that's fantastic. And it's easy to eat and all that good stuff. Okay. So, but sometimes people just like, they go to the cheddar or they're familiar with the brie. And maybe you want to add in some interesting, different cheeses because that's what Mm -hmm. makes an interesting, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. cheese platter Mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but maybe people are a little scared Mm -hmm. off. So what if I did got subway tiles, the long ones, right? So they're they're like Mm -hmm. eight inches, right? And you can put a little selection of three different cheeses maybe, and you could write in Sharpie what that cheese mm-hmm, is. Mm-hmm. And you could have them out with maybe a, a selection of wine that would be a nice pairing. And people can – now they can walk around with that. They have a little plate. But would only one tile. have the writing on it or all of them? No, you would so – you would You'd have, have like a demo plate. Ha- no, you'd have a whole oh, bunch okay. of – Oh, okay. Where people could then choose. So, you know, you might have other things like maybe you have your oh. baguettes cut up. Sounds like oh, I think that's such a good like idea. That. I love that. Do you I like love that? it. I love the idea to, I love to be it. a guest there. I'm not sure I want to do all that work. But here's the thing, Nita. It wouldn't, I mean, you wouldn't have 50 people. Say you had 10 people, mm-hmm. something like that. Mm-hmm. So you have, t- you know, t- and, the, and then you just bring out the cheese board, you know, mm-hmm. with everything and everybody can, but maybe now they've been introduced to a different cheese that they might not yeah, have. Yeah. So their first plate try. is mm-hmm. one you have curated for them. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. like a cheese. Oh, I love that thing. idea. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or, yes. Or okay. on those, on those subway tiles, you could write, what all the, you know, they have these fabulous descriptions for what the cheese tastes like. Right. Mm-hmm. And there's many oh, yeah, a cheese that I've tasted tile. that I would not have <laughs> tasted had I not had a description of it. Well, that's yeah. true. I mean, I remember one time having a party and we had smoked salmon and so many people were afraid to try it. Yeah. But it's mm-hmm. so I delicious. I know. Right. Right. Yeah. And cheeses, you know, I think cheese like wine can be intimidating to people. And so they just, you know, they just take the path of least resistance mm-hmm. and then pick out a cheese that they, oh, a cheddar, Gouda, whatever. But there's so many mm. cheeses out there in the world. I worked at a gourmet shop when I was in college and I really got a nice education from this woman who ran the store and cheese. And um, there's just, oh my gosh, there's so many different cheeses that have out wonderful there taste. That, yeah. And so, so I thought, that, and that's also a really easy thing to do, but it's, it's, Mm-hmm. It's entertaining, it's interesting, and it's slash like a new mm-hmm. experience for people. Or um, speaking of cheese, how about a fondue party, a holiday fondue? And oh, they, you know, like wonderful. when my mother was young, they had them. They were popular. Well, they, oh, I have yeah, two fondue yeah. services. Cause yes. My mother had an orange they're fondue. They're fun. Party. Okay. Can, Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold at the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Greenchef.com slash 60DTT. And use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor. And I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pant at $49.90. The price is unbeatable and the look is so flattering. 
It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with Quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with Quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365-day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365-day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. But what about the fondue dripping? It's yes, messy. that's fondue's messing. So I did the chocolate fountain, oh. but you know what? I had kids and dripping chocolate, <gasps> you and did I don't not. You oh, know, I don't I'm fussy know. about that my was... chocolate, so I don't usually eat those because I don't usually they don't have good chocolate in it. Well, you put I in whatever chocolate Anita, you want. I can't believe Anita would dip something in to where children were putting it. <laughs> 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 anyway, I'm still trying to like get my head around that. Like, really. But a fondue, oh, like watery, there right? may have been a glass of they, wine. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, good Swiss or, or a good, you know, some good wine in that. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Well, and no, we love goat cheese. Thing. So I found an ash covered goat cheese that was, it's like a blue cheese goat cheese that was wonderful. Ooh, mm-hmm. ooh, ooh, ooh. that sounds good. How about um, something that, again, a little different and special and elegant? How about port and dessert or just oh i love oh, that yep. oh i mm-hmm. love port oh yes because as americans dessert. people d- i think you know port is like sort of really exotic still or like a digestive like something or after a dinner white like that. port it's not uh, really port is wonderful too there's a white port oh and that doesn't stain the carpet <laughs> there you go <laughs> it does it's but just you know, not like as the noticeable. after dinner drink is not um you know it's really not necessarily in the 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 normal vernacular mm-hmm. of American homes, right? Like my mother-in-law is all about that being, you know, definitely Americanized, but she's very German. And so she loves to have sherry. I was just going to say a sherry like is wonderful or um, mm-hmm. ice wine. If you're, if you're familiar with ice wine, oh, you know, I'm not a sweet wine, wine the- drinker, but that ice wine just knocked my socks off. I, I love port, but you know, there is, of course, Godiva's makes it. Yes, we have it. Before. Well, we have it right here. I, oh. yeah, I used to have it and I cooked a lot with it, baked mm-hmm. with it, but also, and Starbucks has a coffee. Oh, I Just, honestly didn't know you were such a baker. I love to bake. Yes. I really didn't know that. Did yeah, you I know did that know that. Anymore? Well, you know, my first love is interior design. Second love, cooking. And baking. Mm-hmm. I'll cook anything, yeah. but baking, I can do it. I don't love it. Oh, no, mm-hmm. I love it. It's very messy. So let me just jump back mm-hmm. onto the cheese board because I'm not going to let you go on that. Just so everybody has an idea. When you're creating the perfect cheese board, and since we don't have another half hour to talk about, I'll just give you a few tips. You're going to want your cheese at room temperature. Oh, yes. So you don't want ice cream yes. mm-hmm. cheese. Right. And yeah. And if you're going to serve it before dinner, if you're having a cocktail party in the afternoon and people are going to then go out to dinner or you're going to have dinner at their ha- your house for them after, do something savory like olives and prosciutto and mm-hmm. nuts and chutney and stuff like that. If it's an after-dinner cheese board, you're going to maybe want to tend to the sweeter mm-hmm. accompaniments right. like jams and honeys and right. um, some f- dried mm. fruits or something like that. And try to balance it out between hard and soft cheeses and put in, throw in some, Meats. you know, kind of renegade mm-hmm. cheeses, so, mm-hmm. you know, something yeah. from the small something batch exciting. cheese places. Yeah, something exciting. And do yourself a favor. A butter knife has no place on a cheese board. It's mm-hmm. too clunky and big, right? So get yourself a set of cheese yes. knives mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and your surface should be a, a cold surface, like a marble mm-hmm. or a slate or mm-hmm. something like that. Or, of course, mm. these tiles, which apparently is a fabulous idea. Good, so I mean, good, I'm good I'm glad tips. you like that. Mm-hmm. Hey, there's just a couple I want to throw out, and then it's time to go. Yeah. How about a tree hunting party? Like, everybody goes to, gets together, has a little nosh before, and everybody takes thermoses of cider or something. And we have so many tree farms around here. 
and goes out together. Oh, and then how you, fun. That sounds I know, delightful. doesn't that sound fun? Or an event, like oh, plan yeah. to go to see a show or go to see a symphony and then have people before for hors d'oeuvres or after for dessert and or an ornament making party. Now we've done a few of those and they are so fun, a little messy, but so fun. Oh, so fun. So would you provide yes, all everything. the mm-hmm. materials mm-hmm. for but the I, ornaments? It's always got to be oh, something really easy for everybody. Mm-hmm. Or yeah, just yeah, a yeah. plain They're old open craft house. Levels. Plain old yeah, open house. Holiday it's always open nice. House. And I think that's great this time of year too, because people do have a lot of other commitments or, you know, their kids want to be someplace else or they have to be picked up from a party or something like that. So if you give the people the opportunity yeah. just to pop in, if it was, you have to come and stay a long time. Maybe right. Open your house come. from like four they to can come nine for a half hour and have people drop in as yeah. they can. You'd be surprised how long they stay. Well, if you guys have. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Ours right. are always like, okay, exactly. it's 11 o'clock, you know. Well, listen, we've given, hopefully we've given you a lot of good ideas um, to have a holiday party at your house. Think about that. Now's the time. And remember, we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. Hey, everybody. We want to thank you so much for listening to Decorating Tips and Tricks. And we want to make it even easier for you to listen. And it's easier if you subscribe. You just click the subscribe button on our website, www.decoratingtipsandtricks.com. Or you can subscribe through Apple Podcast or any of your favorite podcast listeners. When you subscribe, DTT comes free right to you three days a week. So until next time.